To assess which of these models is more appropriate, the one mean model or the seven mean model, we can compare these sets of residuals. For this data point here, for example, which is in the seventh group, we can see the residual for the equal means model is the vertical distance between this point and this overall mean, this line. The residual for the separate means model is how far this point is from the mean in the seventh group. It's much smaller. So the overall idea, if we want to assess which model is more appropriate, is to compare overall how do these residuals from the equal means model compare to these residuals from the separate means model. It'll always be true that the residuals from the separate means model are on average a bit smaller or no bigger than the residuals from the equal means model just because, you know, if I'm a point in the first group, on average I'll be closer to the average of the first group than the average overall just because I'm contributing more to that first average. This will always be a little bit smaller, but are the separate means residuals enough smaller that it's worth having seven different means to estimate rather than just combining all the data. In other words, do we have enough evidence to reject the null hypothesis that the means are the same in every group? What we do in order to summarize the residuals is we square them all. Why are we squaring them? Because otherwise when we add them up, we're going to get zero. We're going to square them and then we're going to add them. We're going to take the sum of the squared residuals. If you're familiar with ANOVA and you've heard terms like sums of squares, residuals, some square between, some square within, that's where all this comes from. We're adding up the squares of residuals. Also, you can see that these sums of squares are very related to the concept of variance. What is variance? It's the sum of the square differences between the points and a mean divided by how many you have, and actually, if I were to take all these data points and divide by the total sample size, I'll use a lowercase n there for the total sample size, this is just the variance of all the data points, right? Y bar is the sample mean of all the data points. If I take each data point, see how far it is from Y bar, square it, add them all up, divide by how many there are, this is just the variance, right? That is just the variance, and this would be the sample variance. So these quantities here, these sums of squares, are very related to variance. They're just variances without dividing. And they're the basis of an ANOVA. This separate means sum of squares, if I were to divide by n minus 7, because I've estimated 7 means here, this is just the pooled variance, parallel to the pooled variance estimate from the pooled t-test. Within each group, let's see how far the points are from the mean in that group. Let's square all those residuals, add them up, divide by how many there are, minus the number of values that I estimated. So either a regression or an ANOVA, since they're the same thing, would allow me to compare the sums of squared residuals from these two models. These are not the only two models we could have specified. In this example, it turns out what we're interested in is how this first judge compares to the rest. And so we could have, maybe we could call it a two-means model. What would the two-means model look like? Well, the two-means model might say, I think that judges 2 through 7 should all have the same mean. Maybe it's up here. If I exclude the first group and just take the mean of all these values, right? I'll call it y bar other. Okay, all the others except for the first one. Judges 2 through 7 should all have the same mean, and anything other than that is just variation. It doesn't matter whether it's judge 2 or 3, right? But judge 1 is importantly different from those. So how would I calculate the residuals then? Well, the first value in the first judge would be compared to y bar 1, the first, the mean of the values in the first group. And the second value in the first group would be compared to y bar 1. But all the other values are going to be compared to this overall mean of the values from judges 2 through 7. 
So now we have yet another sum of squared residuals. And what an ANOVA or a regression will do is allow us to compare the sums of squared residuals from these different models in order to conduct hypothesis tests telling us whether, for example, we have enough evidence to reject the null hypothesis that all the means are equal, or whether we have enough evidence to reject the null hypothesis that two means are enough. We don't need seven different means. Why are we doing this? Well, because we're trying to learn about how these values differ from each other. Perhaps we really want to know whether all the, all the means are the same in all seven groups or whether the seven groups are different from each other. Maybe we really want to know, is the first group importantly different from all the rest? These procedures will answer questions like that.